Hello everyone, today we're going to go check out MDT or Microsoft Deployment Toolkit and how to deploy Microsoft Deployment Toolkit and Windows 11 to push out a new Windows 11 image onto our systems. So taking a look here on the whiteboard, the Microsoft Deployment Toolkit does come with a number of different components, but the one we are really interested in is this thing called Deployment Workbench, which is what you'll see when you first deploy Microsoft Deployment Toolkit. Now, what this will actually do is it will create something called a deployment share when we initially build this. And this deployment share can actually be on the same server that we install MDT on, or it could be on a different location. So it could be on something like backslash backslash file server backslash MDT share. Now, this MDT share location, this is where we're going to add all of our resources to deploy our operating system. And there's going to be a number of different things we need to add. For example, we might need to actually add the ISO slash the WIM image or the Windows installer image of, in this case, Windows 11. We may also need to integrate other things into this as well. We might have drivers that we want to include in the operating system, and we might actually have applications that we want to include in the operating system. We can add all of these into our MDT deployment share that we can then pick off essentially off a virtual shelf to be able to build our images, or more to the point, build our task sequences. So the whole point of MDT is when we actually construct or add in these resources into our MDT share, we can come back to this deployment workbench and create something called a task sequence. Now a task sequence is, imagine like a list of things to do during the installation. So it might have, for example, format drives then it might have actually install the operating system. Then you might do things like enable BitLocker. You might also enable certain applications or install certain applications. You might run certain scripts. And this is going to make up what's known as a task sequence. This is the thing that you're going to run through or the fact or the thing that the operating system will run through during the installation process. So if you also have over here a new computer or a new virtual machine that you want to deploy an operating system to, what we actually need to do now is actually deploy something called Windows PE. Now Windows PE can come as an ISO. This stands for Windows Pre-Install Environment. It's essentially a bootable version of Windows that boots to RAM. We could go and pass this to a computer or pass this to a virtual machine in a number of different ways. We could actually pass it via either a CD or DVD, if you can remember those. You can pass it in via some form of USB drive, or we could actually pass it in by pixie booting to this resource from our MDT environment. Once we pass Windows PE in here, what we will end up with is a Windows PE environment when we boot off it. This will talk back to this file share location and it will look for the task sequence that we have actually created. Once we pick that task sequence, we can actually start to install that task sequence directly onto the hard drive of that computer or that virtual machine, which will give us our copy of Windows 11. We can also then choose to use that again and again and again on multiple different images. So let's go and have a look at the demo and how this actually works in practice. So over here, I have MDT already installed and I have my deployment workbench ready for me. There is no configuration yet at the moment. This is just a standard Windows server with nothing special on it. And if we go and have a look at Explorer on here, we can see that I've just got a C drive and I've got an E drive. Whereas in this E drive, if I go into lab files, I have some ISOs and I have a Windows 11 evaluation ISO here that you can download off the internet. I also have Hyper-V installed on this machine and within Hyper-V, we also have a gold image one and a Windows 8.1 source image. These were for previous um, demonstrations. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to jump in to have a look uh, at that Windows ISO file and I'm going to mount this ISO just by double clicking on it. So once this is double clicked on, we can go back to our deployment work workbench and we can right click and create a new deployment share. 
So we're going to keep this as not C deployment share, but we're going to change this to E deployment share because I've got more availability inside this E drive on this computer. So I'm going to go next on that one. We're going to keep the default path name there of deployment share dollar. And we're going to go next on that one. And we're going to leave this as MDT deployment share. On the options page, we're going to actually ask for local administrator passwords here, and we're going to remove BitLocker, and we're going to remove ask if a computer backup should be performed. We want to keep this as simple as possible for this demo. So let's go and build that share right now. It will take a few seconds, and once I click finish, you'll notice that I actually have some more options down here. If I go to that location, I have my deployment share here, and you'll notice that has also been replicated out here, just in the file structure itself. That doesn't need to be on this computer. This could be on a remote machine if I want it to, and this deployment workbench could be on my workstation if I wanted to as well. So the first thing I want to do is I want to go and add an operating system to this deployment share. So here inside this deployment share, I'm going to select operating systems. I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to import this to the OS. I'm going to import a full set of source files. I'm going to click next on here and the source directory is going to be D. This source directory, remember, is this mounted Windows 11 ISO image and this is where it's going to extract all of the information it needs to be able to push it. Notice that by default, the destination still says Windows 10, so we'll change that to Windows 11 Enterprise because it is a Windows 11 Enterprise image. Let's go next on that one, and this is now going to start importing that operating system image into my MDT deployment share. So we'll give this a minute to complete. So now that import has actually completed, we can go and start to add other additional things we might need during this installation. So we want to drop into applications here and we actually want to add a new application. These are applications that we want integrated into our operating system to make our custom Windows 11 installation. So we're going to import a new application here and we're going to import an application with source files. This is going to be a very basic application. We are just going to grab XML Notepad. Now, XML Notepad, I actually have available here on my eLocation, Lab Files, and Apps. And you'll notice I have XML Notepad available here as an MSI file. So we're going to go and grab this from the source directory of eLab Files Apps. We'll go next on this one. And on the destination, we're going to accept that path as well. On the command line details, it's going to be XML Notepad Setup.msi. And we'll click next on this as well. So that's copied those applications over and we should have Microsoft XML Notepad here. We can see the properties of XML Notepad if we want to, and we can see any details that are attached to this and how it's going to install. The slash Q switch, remember, is actually for slash quiet. We could modify this by adding things like reboots after this application installs or restrict it to only being able to run on certain operating systems. So now we've got an application loaded and we've actually got an operating system loaded. Remember, we could also load other things like additional drivers or we could load other things like packages down here if we wanted to. But I'm happy at the moment with this operating system and this application. In fact, let's just add one more new application here and set an application with source files. And we'll have the publisher again as Microsoft and the application name. We're going to have this as PowerToys. And if we go next on that one, the source directory of this application is going to be E. Whoops. The source directory of this application is going to be E, lab files, applications, power toys, and OK that. If we next on that one, we can apply Microsoft Power Toys. And if we drop back into this apps location into Power Toys, we find that we've actually got Power Toys Setup.exe. So I'm going to go and grab this specific line as well for PowerToysSetup.exe as my command line. Next, next, and finish that installation off. Okay, that's wonderful. So now we're going to create an MDT task sequence. So on this general settings location, we're going to go into task sequences and we're going to create a new task sequence. We'll give this an ID of 001 because we just start with numbers for the task sequence IDs and we'll give it a proper name of deploying Windows 11 Enterprise. 
This is going to be a standard client task sequence. There are a number down here. So we could deploy, for example, a sysprep and capture sequence if we're attempting to capture an image on an existing computer. Or we can deploy something like a custom task sequence, which would include no pre-population of the task sequence inside here. The documentation does cover what each of these do and what each of these contain. Or you can just experiment and click through them yourself. So I'm going to choose a standard task sequence in here. I'm going to click next on this one and I'm going to choose the operating system that says Windows 10 Enterprise Evaluation in Windows 11 Enterprise install.win. Now this is interesting because you've seen Windows 10 pop up a couple of times. There's a lot of references to Windows 10 in Windows 11 that Microsoft didn't actually quite clear out correctly. This is, don't worry, my Windows 11 um, operating system ready to install. So on this select operating system version, we selected that as enterprise evaluation and we're going to not specify a product key at the moment. And what we're going to do is we're going to specify a couple of names here for some users. We'll have the full name of user and an organization of Contoso. We'll leave Internet Explorer homepage blank. This is the local admin password for the computer and we'll just add a local admin password there. And we can click next on this one and we are now added in. So let's click finish on this and we have a deploy Windows 11 enterprise task sequence available. If we go into the properties of this task sequence, we can actually see that there is actually a lot more options here than was developed than was shown just in the wizard. You've got everything from gather data locally to validation to state captures to pre-installs to installation of the operating system and post installation. And at each individual step within this task sequence, you could go and create or add new things to the task or remove things that are already in this existing task. So what we want to do is we want to come in here and we want to go into this validation space and we'll just remove, for example, this ensure minimum memory and minimum processor speed because we're going to deploy this to a virtual machine where the memory is actually going to be dynamic. Apart from that, we're going to leave the rest of it actually defaulted. And we're going to apply this. Just take note that on uh, this stage down here, we have, for example, uh, where has it gone? Um, install the operating system and under post installation, we should have things like applying patches and there it is. There's our install applications. It's one of the most important things that we can do. We can go and add our applications in here that we want. So if we go and add in if statements, whoops. <sighs> okay, so we'll click OK on that one. And we'll drop back into configuring this deployment share. And we'll right click on this deployment share. And we're going to click on properties of here. And we're going to have a look at the rules. So notice we've got platform supported x64 and x86, 32-bit and 64-bit. We have the UNC path for this deployment share. And we're just going to drop straight into the rule sets down here. Now, Microsoft didn't really give us uh, a nice interface here. They gave us um, a, um, a essentially a configuration file. Uh, this is actually the custom settings.ini file uh, and you can actually add additional stuff to this if we really want to. This is what we uh, edited during that wizard at the start. We have our Windows PE ready and loaded. It's Light Touch PE x86. So this is actually the 32-bit version um, that is on here. And we're going to change the scratch page size to 64 just to make sure this runs a little bit quicker. Uh, also over here in the feature packs, We're going to select a couple of extra options. We're going to pop in the DISM commandlets and we're going to pop in a Windows PowerShell and the Microsoft Data Access components. We don't actually need to add these in, but it's just to show that we can add additional stuff in if we really want to, including things like 8021X authentication or language packs for um, non-standard keyboards. Well, I say non-standard keyboards. They are standard in the countries that those keyboards exist in, but they are um, different to what I'm using at the moment. So I'm going to apply that, I'm going to OK that, and I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to update this deployment share. So by updating this deployment share and clicking next on this for optimizing the boot update process, what this is going to do is it's now going to take all of that information that I've imported and making sure that it's all listed in that file share correctly, ready for me to actually boot an operating system 
or more to the point, boot Windows PE and actually install an operating system from that location. This process of mounting the WIM file and extracting this information can take a few minutes. This depends on the size of the image and of the speed of your hardware, most notably the speed of your drives. So we need to give this five minutes to actually complete the process of mounting the image and installing it. While that image is preparing itself, what I'm also going to do is I'm going to pop over here to Hyper-V and make some small configuration changes here. So I'm going to create an external switch here and I'm going to just name this external network and we'll leave this connected to the Microsoft Hyper-V network adapter and we'll click yes on this one. So what I'm going to do is create a new virtual machine and I'm going to do this from the ground up. So we are going to create a new virtual machine called SEA WS4 and we're going to store this in a slightly different location. We'll just install this into eLab Files virtual machines. We'll leave this as generation two hardware. So we get UEFI boot and the amount of memory we're going to give it as eight gigs worth of RAM. So let's drop next on this one. On the networking, we're going to connect this to our external network, which means that this virtual machine will actually have the ability to talk to the deployment share that actually is running on this server as well. On the create virtual hard disk, we're going to make sure that this is actually sitting in the location of eLab files virtual machines, keep everything together, and we'll use just a 60 gigabyte drive. We don't need the full 127 gig. We're actually going to choose a specific operating system to boot from and we're actually going to boot from this light touch um, PE operating system here, which will then allow us into communication with the MDT deployment share. So let's click next on that one and let's click finish. That should create the virtual machine for me. Dropping back, we'll have a look. Our user deployment update deployment share is still updating at the moment. So we still need to give that a couple of moments to work. So our process is now complete. We can click finish on this and our task sequence is ready to be used. So we can drop into SEA SVR4 and we can start this virtual machine. Remember this virtual machine has Windows PE attached to it as an ISO image and should boot off that and go and detect the MDT deployment share. So let's give this a moment to boot. Hit the any key to boot from CD or DVD. If you can't find the any key, remember, just mash the keyboard with your forehead. You'll find it eventually. So this is what Windows PE looks like. It's the Microsoft Deployment Toolkit pre-installation environment. We're going to run the deployment wizard for installing a new operating system. And we're going to enter some credentials for connecting to our network share. The username is going to be administrator. We have a specific password and our domain of Contoso. It's auto detected the MDT deployment share location and I can click on my task sequence. So within this task sequence, this here is a light touch deployment sequence. So I will need to add some slightly additional information here. You can configure a task sequence in something called zero touch where it will actually install everything on the operating system automatically if you script it to do so. So on this computer details, we're going to change this computer name to become SEAWS04. We're going to leave it as a work group rather than joining a domain. If we go next on this one, we're not going to move any data settings. This actually uses a utility called USMT or user state migration tool to be able to migrate data with two utilities, load state and scan state. If I click next on this one, we're not going to restore any user settings. We're going to keep our local times here as United States at the moment because the computer thinks it's in America. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm not in America. These are the applications that I might want to install. I could choose Power Toys or XML Notepad, the ones that I loaded in previously. I'm just going to pick XML Notepad for the moment and we're going to give an administrator password to be able to install this and I'll click begin. Now it's actually going to begin the Windows 11 installation process. And upon a reboot, you should be able to see that we are joined to Windows 11. Well, I say joined, we have installed Windows 11. So let's give this a few minutes to install.
And as you can see, we have a fully deployed copy of Windows 11 that has been deployed over a network and over a file share by using Microsoft Deployment Toolkit. And you know the routine, hashtag like and subscribe. And I hope you enjoyed this video and will join me next time. Goodbye.